I am genuinely so, so excited to be talking to both of you lovely ladies because I have been a really, really big fan of Style Like You for a while now. I remember when I was at uni, so this was about four years ago, one of my best friends sent me a video, one of your um, videos within the What's Underneath project. Um, and I remember watching it, it was like 11 p.m. at night and I was like, okay, quickly, I'm gonna watch one. It's like past my bedtime. And I watched one video and then I literally stayed up till about 4 a.m. binging all of your videos and sending them to all of my friends, mostly to the women that I knew who I thought would really like benefit from how uh, inspiring and empowering your videos are. So firstly, thank you for creating these incredible videos. Thank you're, you for receiving them. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. And that makes us feel great. Mm -hmm. And it's needed. Thank you at times to hear. So it's, uh, you know, we really appreciate it a lot. No, it's... What, what was the first video? What um, was the first one? The first one that I watched was, um, I believe her name was Alex, but I need to double check. She was... Uh, this model, an English model, um, who was talking about how she had an eating disorder. And I think you guys had filmed it in London. Um, and how oh, she Charlie? just... Charlie? Yes, Charlie. Sorry, not Alex. Mm -hmm. And she'd just been dropped from her modeling agency. Um, and mm -hmm. so I had watched that. And then I found her Instagram page and had seen uh, her kind of like transformation um, now to where she was mm -hmm. talking about how she's not like restricting herself from eating and um, is kind of a lot more healthy. And that was the first one that I watched. And then from then on, started binge watching all the other ones. And it's really cool because you do them from all different parts of the world. And isn't the aim, and obviously I want you to talk about mm -hmm. what kind of the aim is for people who don't know and like what your... Um, what you're trying to do, but you film them and talk to a whole diverse range of people. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's very intentional. And so what is the aim of Style Like You, would you guys say? Um, I think the ultimate aim is to empower people to become more comfortable in their skin um, and to um, recognize that's real style and beauty is about exuding a comfort in your skin and about claiming everything about who you are instead of trying to conform or shrink or change yourself to fit into some kind of limited norm. Um, and that by doing that, we feel that people can kind of step into their most like powerful selves and that we'd have, Whole selves. And that we'd have a better world if everyone, you know, was functioning from that place. And how did you Well, we're not only just a better world, we'd have a we'd have a a a a, a like gigantically different world, like in terms of um uh you know, in terms of connectedness and wholeness and um consciousness and um like men, we believe that um, on the surface we're we're exploring or or showing or revealing uh, how important it is um, for you to be comfortable in your skin and to understand and connect to your real self expression and to um, and to value that you're unrepeatable and 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 that you don't need to be like anyone else to feel beautiful and 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 to have great style and all of that is is really important but it's really just an emblem um or a metaphor or a symbol uh for much deeper values and issues and and that that sense of self should we all embody that would would create a very different world in terms of much larger and bigger problems like the environment and 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 Race. systemic racism mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it, it, you know, that, that, um, I think that even when you look at what's happening in America right now and how overwhelming it is, uh, to, well, you know, it's, 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 we're just seeing, um, what's always been there. Um, we're just seeing the, uh, the, 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 the shadows and the, and the really deep struggle, of humans like their their very low self-worth their feelings that they're not important they're I, I believe like you know e, you know these 
these Trump supporters and what happened yesterday mm -hmm. um, or the, the other day, the day before yesterday in Washington, well, these people, you know, if you really started to scratch the surface, um, they probably are all victims of abuse or mm -hmm. incest or emotional repression and alcoholism and all these different, that's what it's all, it's coming from that, you know, so I think all this to say, um, yes, you know, it's important to have good leaders and laws and, you know, the correct, you know, um, you know, you don't, you know, you know, p not brutal police forces and all of, and, and police forces that are educated in, in race and, and all of that, but deeper, deeper, deeper at the root of the problem is, is repression and, and, um, low self-worth and a lack of understanding who you really are as a person. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, your power, your light, your, 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 what you're doing here, your purpose that you, mm -hmm. that you do matter. Mm -hmm. And our, yeah. yeah, so I guess maybe our videos are, are, are helping people step into their power and into their worth and into the, their light and, and that they matter. Um, mm -hmm. That's maybe the ultimate. Yeah, and like, we're just using this, you know, not using, but showing you know, it because these things permeate all uh, aspects of society. So clothing, you know, how we feel ab about our beauty, you know, aging, all of this. It's all just a symptom or a or a, the external uh, symbol. How how we respond to those things is just an external symbol for a much deeper, uh, deep rooted issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a really interesting and like quite powerful, like especially based on kind of human connection that may be the most important thing that we can do in order to feel like value or to feel self-worth and acceptance is do you kind of, how do you feel about yourself and like how do you treat somebody else and if you can kind of accept yourself and have some form of self-love and work on those like basic things, then you, I mean, not that necessarily you wouldn't have like mass kind of like riots and this, you know, domestic terrorism and everything, but I guess that's like a good place to start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Definitely. so then did you guys ever have any connection with fashion or anything before? Because it's a really interesting concept that with the style uh, with the What's Underneath project, that so people kind of remove uh, an item of their clothing as they answer a question. Uh, and those questions are mostly kind of about um, who they are and what their style says about them, right? Yes. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah and what was that connection? Self-image and identity. The, the, yeah. The, Go ahead. The questions are, the, you know, they're basically, they're, they're, they're very purposely looking to open the heart and the vulnerability and they're not intellectual you know oh, just just on, as a side like yeah they're, they're they are the same set of questions and they similar questions i mean we answer ask basically the same set of questions but they're they're kind of simple and they just really point to getting out of and your head and deeper, into your heart they start yeah. on the more surface about style surface we even though i think we think style is pretty deep but mm -hmm. it starts with the style and every question gets a little deeper 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 to like peel back the layers till the person's just in their underwear and mm -hmm. answering like the most raw question they could yeah but anyways your question about was yeah about fashion so yes there's a connection to fashion my mom go on it we want to yeah that. so i was um when I was your guy's age, when I was in, you know, my 20s and early 30s, I was in the fashion industry. I was a, a fashion editor at Condé Nast at the, you know, and free and worked for many of the different fashion magazines. Um, yes. So over, uh, it's very, the, the, the creation of Style Like You is very connected to that because over the course of 20 plus years, uh, you know, from being in that world at that time in the 80s to, uh, you know, 2009 when we started, um, I saw the change. And I, you know, of, of the top-down corporate greed, capitalism on steroids, oppression, I could see that through fashion, through fashion, through my work, through my inability to express myself freely on an editorial page, like at all, without advertisers, without payment. Um, that's 
huge because uh, that's fascist. And um, that's why we're seeing right now, you know, becoming awakened to the fact that we largely live in, you know, a, close to a fascist society mm -hmm. um, because of how brainwashed we are mm -hmm. by, um, capitalism. by capitalism and, mm -hmm. and corporations and money. And, yeah. Um, so I experienced a time um, where there was not that, where an editorial was an editorial. You could say what you wanted to say and do what you wanted to do, and it wasn't bought. Largely innovate yeah. and open people's minds, and that was everything for me as a fashion editor, fashion stylist. I could do that, my own expression, and but also a, a shoe designer could, who was didn't have a lot of money, who wasn't mass or a, you know whatever any kind of designer or could be end up on those pages. Um, and, and, and be very innovative, mm -hmm. um, and not have money. And, um, that would open people's minds. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I know that sounds weird now, but cause everything is so mass and homogenous and sort of watered down. But there was a time where a shoe, uh, for me, because it was coming from the, uh, genius of the mind of someone, um, you know, and, 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 and then my connection to that genius and then my wanting to ex put that, you know, it, mm -hmm. show other people how that could be expressed, um, you know, could really change how you, a lot of things, like it, it, it could really change how you, how you express yourself fully, and you know, you think, and yeah. Do you think fashion could ever go back to that? kind of because it sounds what you're describing is really like an expression of the self and like artistic and a real mm -hmm. creative space yes. soulful yeah and do you think now that I mean obviously capitalism uh, like is just the way that we live and social media as well kind of compounds it and makes it so much worse do you think that maybe we'll move so far into the space of fast fashion and people buying things and social media that eventually there'll be some kind of like boom and a shattering and potentially going back to that or it's kind of just money driven now the industry I think that's already happening I think the shattering and the rebirth it, I think we're at the very beginning of it but I think yes I think that is going to happen and I think Sorry. it is happening Sorry. I think we're at the very 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 beginning shh of that. Mm -hmm. I'm hopeful. Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you're, I think so. I think, I think a lot is shattering right now. And, and, um, and that's what we've been doing. Um, you know, so yeah, like we've been, we've been confronting this beast, um, without really even, uh, fully knowing that we were, you know, I, well, I'm sure we'll get into that, but we were confront, not really understanding the depths of what we were confronting at the very beginning, but just scratching the surface and then opening up Pandora's box, you know? Right. Um, yeah, that, that happened sort of accidentally, but, um, yes, I, I think that, um, I think there's a, <laughs> I, I think we're at the beginning of it. I have a new puppy. Can you pick him up? Pick her up? I think we're, I think we're in the, at the beginning of a, I believe that we're at the beginning of a new paradigm. And I believe that, you know, the pandemic really has sealed that deal. Yeah. And it's crazy how, because obviously the pandemic has made people have to do things in totally different ways. How have you found, because in your videos, the ones that I was watching, um, obviously before COVID, when I first like discovered you guys, there's such a real human connection when you have someone there and when you're speaking to somebody and especially when you two are on when you talk to you about their vulnerabilities and it's so personal and touching do you find that COVID has made it so much harder with a screen and zoom or is can you still do you think you you can still connect with people in that same level that you have been um well hold on should I stop her before I can talk let me just try to get <laughs> sure yeah you need to stop <laughs> How old is it? Did you say it's a she? Yeah, she's like five months. Oh. 
Is it going to stay that small the whole time, or is she one of those dogs that's going to get I'm, like massive? No, she's, we're not uh, sure. she's not going to get much bigger, but we're not sure how okay. much more there is to go. We're she's hoping... already like tripled. I mean, she was like in the palm of my hands oh. when I got her. We're hoping not too much bigger. Yeah, she was. Do you know um, what, um, sorry, tea pigs are? I think they're called, t- no, teacup pigs. There was like this uh-uh. phase in the UK where people were buying all these like mini tea teacup pigs. I think Paris Hilton had one. And a few people oh, bought. Oh, pigs. Yeah, they bought these like tiny little pigs. And wow. then they thought it was really cute. And then they grew up. To be like, some people just bought massive pigs and they didn't realize it was hilarious. Oh, that's so funny. I know. It's funny. Um, So, I mean, I mean, we did. So at the beginning of the pandemic, we tried a few like Zoom based interviews. And I think that the connection, it's more like we had like we we got frustrated by the technical like side of doing live streams and stuff because it. But I, there's nothing that replaces the in-person, I don't think. But it's not that it's not possible at all over Zoom. I mean, we had some really great interviews over Zoom, but we mostly got frustrated with, like, just the – it wasn't. It didn't feel the same as creating – because, we. I don't know, we feel like our videos are little pieces of art, and it didn't feel quite the same to have it just be, like, this unedited live stream or something. So we so we tried it, but ultimately we kind of stopped and, and, and waited till we could safely – shoot and we just luckily yeah we have a whole new series we coming out we just shot that we shot in person coming out that we finally starting figured, in february you know we had to figure out our covid protocol and everything but but it was we shot in new york la and atlanta, atlanta and we did wow. some road tripping so that we because of because of covid and and did was, you start that last year around in the yeah. early kind of springtime or is that been going on for longer no, no, we we shot that in like November, and okay. early December. We just okay. finished, yeah, and it's okay. coming out next month, starting next month. We have one one more person and and going to Detroit in February, but to, that will be yeah. But we're oh, actually yeah. Anyway, yes, we've started shooting again, and we plan well, on yeah. Now, luckily, we kind of did it just in the nick of time before things got really bad in LA, and now we're we would. We're but we plan shooting. on our, our plan is to have a video a week from now on for good. Okay, nice. Uh, starting starting. We have a couple in January of closets, you know, that we've been doing these kind of COVID edition closets, like outside of people's houses. Oh, no way. We have a couple more. We have a couple more of those. Some of, There's a couple there that we've done already on YouTube and mm-hmm. on Instagram. And um, yeah, and then we have this really exciting What's Underneath series that uh, we're beginning What's Underneath again with this series that's exclusively Black Voices. And okay. That starts in February for Black History Month. And, and so that's very what you filmed. Excited. That's what you filmed in. De- what you're going to be filming: Detroit, Atlanta, New York, LA. We did already film. We it. did everything. We just have one one more shoot, but yeah, yeah in Detroit. And so, yeah. so you started Style Like You in 2009. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, what made you? How did you know when you started? Okay, like even how big that you guys were going to be, and how ama- like what a massive impact you were going to have in so many people's lives, and how big this project was going to be, or why did you start it? No, definitely didn't have any idea what was going to happen. And it was very, it was organic. It was organic and we had, and totally like driven by our passion. Um, but we had like no idea what we were doing whatsoever. Um, it started when I was a freshman in college and my mom was still styling. She had just returned to the industry after like a, you know, 10 year gap when she was raising me and my brother and, she was really, really frustrated and disturbed by everything she was just saying as far as like how it had kind of devolved into this greedy, homogenous like place that was really about exploiting insecurities in order to sell products instead of like celebrating individuality and self-expression. So she was really miserable at that part of her, in that moment of her career. Right. And then Mm -hmm. I was, I had struggled, um, a lot in my adolescence with body image and, um, I never fit into the standard of beauty at the time and so and was pretty um obsessively trying to get myself to fit into that standard which was a very unhealthy like cycle for me and um and so we both had our sort of frustrations with the current landscape of fashion and beauty media um but uh, at the same time shared this like passion just for people like people watching and street like, you know, just the kinds of people that make your head turn when you see them on the street because they just are such a strong individual and march to the beat of their own drum. And um, you can just tell there's something like, you know, they're not conforming and they're really like knowing who they are. There's just something about the way they move and walk and 
when you see them on the street. And we were always obsessed with those kinds of people. And we knew a handful of them in our personal lives, just friends and stuff. And we decided one day to just pick up a home video camera and go into those few people's homes and just like, just start asking them about why they dress the way they dress and how, you know, what does their style say about them and how did they like, you know, be such strong individuals in this culture that does not promote that. And, um, that's all about conformity. And so we, we just became like really obsessed right away with the interviews because they were so cathartic for us personally. They were so like life affirming and also like transformative for my, for me, for my own journey of like discovering my own sense of style outside of fashion and becoming more comfortable in my body. And, and for her, I think it was affirming of like the, the kind of creativity she wanted to bring back into the world after an industry from the industry and, um, and also, um, um, uh, subjugating, um, so, no, not subjugating, um, I was subverting, thinking, subverting, subverting the, mm -hmm. um, celebrity culture kind of status quo of the same blonde, retouched, empty sort of person face on that had been going on on the cover of magazines and you know had, this is all the, like pre instagram the same so. five people yeah. you know like from two, 2000 and from 1994 to 2009 where like if you went into an airport or whatever you would just see hundreds of like the same face yeah. and um yeah and so i would i just i was we were very much about like this can't be like this can't like this isn't this 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 just isn't a reflection of humanity and it's not a reflection of I, we weren't gonna I wasn't gonna give in to this <laughs> like it was just boring and um and and um oppressive and I wasn't going to as a, I was in my early fifties um, I wasn't going I didn't feel uh, like a, really like a nothing person. Cause I'm not this, this, this rail thin, yeah. you know, Blonde, like yeah. four, 14 year old looking like a 14 year old, you know, basically yeah. prepubescent, you know? Um, so yeah. So it was, it was, it was really like, we were really, uh, pushing against this conformity and homogeneity as Lily said, and very intentionally, um, and thinking that, why can't there be a media platform? Why can't there be a space where one person to the next is completely different? Like, why do you have one place is for, you know, people over 35 or one, you know, like it's all so, why can't we relate and connect to each other through our similarities and through our differences? Like, why, why, you know, that's such, that, like, in other words, why can't we celebrate how unique we are and and then also realize how connected yeah we are. Re I realize how connected we are through our stories through our pain well that you know now I'm getting ahead a little bit because from, so it started yeah. with these closet videos that we were literally doing on a home video camera like no concept of how to make videos or do anything and teaching myself how to edit and flipping the camera upside down and chewing gum and taking flashing <laughs> like it was a mess like if you look we were at talking the, to each other during the interview if you look at some of the early <laughs> interviews I mean they're fine they, the heart and soul is always there so there's still like something magical about them but like technically they're complete shit and and like they're ridiculous um but we yeah we just became like really obsessed because of how personally inspired we were and we just kind of started putting them on a blog and like, mm -hmm. oh, like it was in the days of blogs and, um, we just started like uploading them to Vimeo and putting them on a blog. And, um, I remember I was drawing pictures of blogs to my, my mom didn't know how to use the internet and I was trying to explain, <laughs> okay, like there's going to be a box and there's yeah. going to be a video and then you get, and then, um, and then that we literally were like crazy and just did like hundreds and hundreds of these interviews. Like we did like 800. 800? In the space of? Like a few years, five, four, four wow. years. Wow. We were crazy and we were just running around New York City and like just... Like, and London. Yeah, we were... We were but and, that eventually... Oh my God. Uh, London has always, by the way, been a great place. Very big... We've always felt very at home there and 
end up doing shooting there all the way through all mm -hmm. the, those 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 closets and and then what's underneath and everything because it's always London has been very welcoming and warm. Oh, to, 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 to. oh, good. I'm glad you think so. Like London yeah. is a really cool, unique place, and I mean, from my perspective and from people I've spoken to, they London is like a massively, uh, I know New York is also a cultural melting pot, but London, you really can meet mm. people from all different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And people really are quite like warm and welcoming there. I do feel a lot of the time. I mean, they say, I heard this phrase recently that was like, pe Americans can be um, soft on like a peach, like soft on the outside and hard on the inside, like really, really friendly on the exterior and then potentially harder to get to know. I don't know if you guys find this true at all. And then English people can be, um, harder on the outside but then like uh really mm -hmm. soft and doughy or something like English people can be a little bit cold but then once you get to know them um mm. people can be really like welcoming and warm and everything but it's cool to hear that London has been a spot for you where you've had like cool mm -hmm. interviews and how oh, yeah. did you in so if you're filming these videos at home like starting with your friends how do you go from doing that mm -hmm. to people you don't know like was it literally just going up to people on the street or did you yeah. oh really yeah, we would run around New York and go to like as many, we were just constantly like researching like different interesting cultural events that were going on and running around and running up to people and getting their information. And there was a time where I thought I would, I, 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 I was unsure about whether I would ever walk into a place with, a, you know, with crowds of people and not be spending the entire time <laughs> with my head turning like, you know, and every direction looking for that one, you know, the peacock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so and that's how it began. And it's, we, we miss that a little bit with like, because now it's so much on Instagram and like, it's, you know, it's. Yeah, it's we harder. do miss that. And especially obviously during COVID, there's no like scouting people in real life. But yeah, um, yeah we miss that era of like the in-person scouting and finding people. And how do people react to that? Well, how did they react when oh, you mostly pretty well. Yeah, well, if you say right away, you first have to compliment them. Right you have away. to say you have amazing style. Yeah, and then their guard is down, and they're like, "Okay, we're yeah." Here. No, but mostly they're flattered, and you know. But I mean, there are people that have walked away, and plenty of people have said no to us to do our well, videos. Well, especially what's underneath. Plenty yeah. really? more say no than say yes. Yeah. Wow. Because it is a courageous thing to do, you know, to take off your clothing and then to sit there vulnerable. And I guess it, it is like you guys talk about how it's a metaphor for uh, being emotionally vulnerable, being physically vulnerable as well. It's a really beautiful mm -hmm. uh, message and, and visual image at the same time. And when you started the video, like, was your first video that you did in the same format that you still do now in terms of taking off one piece of clothing? No. No, so it started as our closets, which we would go into people's homes and they would just be trying on a bunch of outfits and talking about their style. And it was just more about, it was more about the style. And then we basically, like, five years into our journey, after doing hundreds of those, like, running in people's homes, we were... Um, we just started to realize realize that the thread between all of these people that drew us to them was their spirit and their comfort in who they are and their um, kind of claiming of everything about who they are. And that's what their style was really expressing. And so we were like, so their style is not really about their clothes at all. Like their style has nothing to do with what they're wearing. They're, they're, what they're wearing is just an expression of the inside and of their comfort with themselves and of their strong sense of self. And like, so, so we were like, how can we show people, because it was really important to our mission and everything we cared about, to show people that, that, you know, it's not, you know, style isn't about um, the surface. It's not the surface thing, and it's about this deeper sense of comfort and knowing who you are. And so we were like, let's actually literally show that by having people take off their clothes as they're answering our questions and showing that the real beauty is is the, is the comfort in, in your skin. And that's how, that's how what's underneath initially started, but then that took us on this completely other journey of like, you know, uncovering every ill of our society through these interviews and through these people's stories and through the way they've overcome the conditioning that they've all been brought up, that they've been brought up with um, from, from our society and, 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 and had the like courage and the ability to stand strong in who they are, despite all the different types of oppression that people have faced, you know, whether it's because of body image or because of race or age or gender or sexuality. Um, and so it kind of became this deeper exploration of all of those like societal ills and, and 
it kind of, yeah, it kind of took on a life of its own from, from where we started with the closets. Um, yeah. And have all the videos and like the people that you've met and talking about style and obviously Alyssa you come from a fashion background has it made you rethink your own style Mm -hmm. really yeah how so we're not um what you want to go first I mean for me it's been a 180 degree transformation of like being um, like a 19 year old who didn't like her body, who wanted to conform to fit into the standard of beauty at the time, which was like the Kate Moss, like era of beauty or, you know, like the wafy skinny jean girl, um, that I grew up consuming. It went from me trying to lose weight and conform to try to fit into that standard to a, like completely transforming my relationship to my body and becoming super, proud and um of being a bigger girl and then also finding a sense of style that like reflects not only that embracing of my body but also my authentic personality and not trying to kind of like dim my light or shrink myself to be this like Mm one-dimensional stick figure Mm -hmm. um so it's completely it's a hundred percent hundred percent new relationship to style Mm -hmm. um and everything and for me, um, in a way, it's similar now that I'm listening to Lily explain it. I, I haven't really thought of it this way, but it's similar in that I didn't have that exact... I mean, I had my own struggles with this, with the norms, you know, age-wise, being very flat-chested, you know, whatever. I mean, nobody fits into this norm, like basically. So we all feel like shit, basically. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the purpose. So, um, I've had my own issues with that. Um, uh, even if I'm, you know, you know, fitting a size four, you know, but nevertheless, like I have my own insecurities about my body because of the society and everything. Um, so, but, but on it, so there's that, but there's also, so an increasing comfort with that for the same reasons that Lily's saying, but also um, it's it's created such a uh, doing these interviews has um, has really set me on a uh, on a very deep spiritual path in terms of uh, in terms of acceptance and in, in terms of knowing who I am in terms of um, uh, being, you know, true to myself and what that is really. And I think that my style has, as a result, has become much more effortless and natural, but not, I don't mean that, um, not that it's not flamboyant or it's not loud or any, it, it, just that it, it, it just is whatever it is, whatever I feel. And I feel very, um, free and effortless and unapologetic and, and, uh, and very, and, and, um, as, and, and, and as I age, um, I, you know, it's showing me how, um, you know, this whole idea that this isn't for me or I can't do this or, you know, like I don't, none of that ever crosses my mind. I mean, it never really did, Mm -hmm. but it's just accentuated that where Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel, you know, absolutely no sense of limits. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I don't identify with a number or a stage of life or any external thing that would block me from expressing myself however I want to. And do you think that is, mostly because either because of just the time that you've got to in your life and having experienced things that you have in your own life or do you think it's mostly the interviews that you've done with people and them telling you their life story and everything that they've gone through that that has helped you massively accept who you are yes I think it has a lot to do with um my connection to them uh Yes, yeah, so the, the connection to them has connected me to myself. Right, and has, right. has 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 opened that path and door into myself. Like it it it's 
it's not one of the beauty I think and, and I feel very proud of this. It's it's just I really feel like this was handed to us by I don't know, greater powers. I feel like Lily and I just said yes to, to greater a greater greater powers. I don't feel this is us as much as we're delivering a message that, you know, is coming from something lo- much larger than us. But I think that um, the connection, the, w- w- the thing that I'm proud of is that when you watch these videos, as opposed to media, which is very intentionally trying to make you feel like you need to be someone else, that these are about making you want to be more yourself. Mm-hmm. So the actual interview, while I, you know, very much admire their courage and and their style and 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 their comfort in their skin and the place that they're at and all of those things it's just made me have to look it's a mirror mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah and we're picking people that really inspire us because they are so free you know we're picking people that we find to be quite free in who mm-hmm. they are and not to subscribe to limits and norms and um and so they expand they expand us and seeing Mm -hmm. them like for, for me, they're expanders for me, seeing all the beautiful, like bigger women that we've interviewed over the years has literally like transformed my brain. Like, Mm -hmm. because I see how in seeing how someone that could be my size or bigger than me, I literally see them as so beautiful in such a genuine way because they feel beautiful and they have, they're comfortable in the way they move in their bodies. That has changed my brain about what beauty is. It's helped me to see that beauty is not a one thing. It's beauty is the energy with which you like inhabit your own body. It's not Mm -hmm. one type of body. So it made me realize that I didn't have to change my body. I had to change my energy and my relationship to my body to that I could be the same person. I could be me in this body and exude like not not exude beauty if I'm feeling like I shouldn't be in this body, but mm-hmm. if I can own it and claim it and yeah. embrace it, it actually makes it beautiful. It makes me it is beauty. Like yeah. so right, and that's what I mean by my it, it's been a mirror to me connecting to my true self and to spirit because at the end of the day that is what Lily saying, like at the end of the day, um, to dim your spirit um, is not what we're what we're doing here. <laughs> like that's 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 that what that's not what that could not be why we were born. Mm-hmm. So it's created it's 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 definitely put me on a path towards understanding what does that mean exactly. Mm-hmm. It's crazy when you think about it how. Um... Alyssa, how you're talking about beauty standards and how, Lily, also you mentioned the Kate Moss thing and there's this image that we're all kind of told that we have to aspire to. And even if you aren't aware of it, it just subconsciously gets into your brain. And even if you, you know, are a skinny girl or you look relatively close to those women, like, you're right, you never, ever feel, you're constantly made to feel like you're never going to get there and that you're not... Um, you have to keep spending more money in order for you to look like that or like keep buying more beauty products to look like that. And one of the reasons why I love style like you is because Lily, how you mentioned these, you see so many women who they kind of embrace who they are and whether that's in terms of like their energy and how they move and their happiness. I feel it's a shame because I feel like they've had to do work like to get to that point. But mm-hmm. a lot of the, a lot of these women and a lot of these people and men and everybody who you have on your channel, a diverse range of people, they have done the work or they're doing the work, and that in itself is so inspiring to see mm-hmm. that. And I think that without the internet or without your channel, even though you get glimmers of people, you can meet people who are doing that. To have a platform where you can see so many people who are putting in that work is something that I think is incredibly helpful and needed in in this time in this industry and hopefully like Alyssa how you were saying how it is changing now from in the fashion industry from kind of hopefully this like mass fast fashion and like standard body image um to people more accepting themselves and hopefully as well with social Mm -hmm. media going from this is what you should look like to kind of this is okay and like you should embrace yourself. I think it's amazing that you guys are contributing to that in such a powerful way. Thank you. Thank you. Just and sh- then also yeah. just also I just want to say that I think 
um, when people accept themselves um, and and want to express their uh, very true self and and uniqueness, then that's going to create a different kind of a demand of what's produced. Mm -hmm. That when I say that I think we're in the beginning of a of a change, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Like you're no longer gonna want to look like everybody else on the mm -hmm. street. Mm -hmm. um, you're gonna say, "Wait, that's like that's me. That's not me. That's you know this feels this feels me." You know, and and have a sense of that. You know, like what what really could be more important than that? You know, than to even that. That's why clothing is not superficial. Why? Well, because it's it's not it's not it's not superficial because um, it, it it's showing you know how okay. in touch or out of touch you are with your true self. Like in other words, if I was to go along with all of the programming of being sixty three years old, um, I don't know. <laughs> like I probably would not be wearing what I'm wearing right now. But like. Um, I'm wearing what I'm wearing right now because I don't even know what that is. Like yeah. that means nothing to me. Yeah. And yeah. it's funny because I think you some most people, or I don't know, I can't speak for most people, but That's a good I, I don't even think about it. You know, you don't even think about a lot of the time how what you're wearing is potentially, it's not even you and you don't necessarily even know what your sense of style or how you want to express yourself is but potentially you're just doing it because that's what everybody's doing that's what you're told to do and unless you take a moment to kind of think about it then you just go along with who you're supposed to be or what whatever role that you're supposed to fit at that age at that exactly. race at that you know and until it's quite like a not a frightening but quite a mm -hmm. you know thing to think about it and think like is this me and even in terms of like thoughts and and things of do mm -hmm. I think this way because of um of x or because I've watched this and like what do I really think about something mm -hmm. yeah brainwashing yeah it's very insidious yeah because if I'm thinking that I can't wear this what else am I doing also that I don't think I can do and and why would why throw any part of your life away why stop ever? Yeah. Yeah. Like you're here to be the fullest person that and most whole person that you can be. And free. And free. So like what why would that cut off at a certain time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how do you think was it ever a decision that you guys had to actively make in terms of okay, we're going to do this together? And were you ever worried about being mother daughter how that relationship would kind of manifest in what you do mm -hmm. um I mean it just ha I mean it definitely just happened that we started doing this together and we've always been really close we used to like joke when I was a kid like we should do a family like thing <laughs> together like we I love our family <laughs> we used to, but I had no idea what we were saying and and I used to be like I am never gonna work in fashion because um I thought it was such a mean superficial industry based on what I had seen growing up. And I was like that, I'm not going to be part of that. Um, so we did. Yeah. So, I mean, it happened really organically, but we did have like different crossroads early on mostly of, especially as I was like young and just in college and like just kind of starting to separate myself and find my own independence. Um, there was, there were crossroads along the way of questioning, like how will I maintain that independence within this close working dynamic. Um, and we've had to have a lot of like consciousness along the way of that and different, and there've been many different phases of that, but ultimately, um, a, ulti a ultimately I've been able to, I think like flourish and grow into like, in a way, the biggest version of myself within the dynamic, because she had, I don't know, we, I used to be worried that I would my mom was such a big personality and had so much to say and I was very shy growing up and I thought that I would maybe get like kind of overpowered by that but in a way that hasn't happened at all. I don't know. I don't know exactly why I kind of maybe you In a way the it. opposite has yeah. happened. In a way I We've had we've had many many iterations and uh, and good more difficult less difficult times together. Um we've worked through a lot of things. We're in a particularly good place right now. Um and I think that has to do with both of us having 
doing a lot of work on ourselves and feeling complete and whole within ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, We've had to do a lot of facing of that. I think maybe extra facing of that because of how, uh, because of the, because of how closely we work and how, and because we both have this very innate sense that, and, 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 and that we are doing what we're supposed to be doing. There's kind of no stepping out of doing what you're supposed to be doing. Like you don't do that. Like there's no stepping out of what, you know, so as a result, that uh, structure has ma- forced us, uh, you know, a little bit like 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 the the chrysalis, the 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 the, the, the caterpillar. What is it? What ca- you know, in in the in the like you know, we've had this tight cocoon? structure of working together in the cocoon, uh-huh. and so we've had to really work hard on our own separate and unique. strengths and 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 be very super in touch with that in order for it to work and not combust so it's but I think the thing that ties it together is what she said is like we just have like a very deep and like unspoken understanding that we have like you know been gifted this like opportunity to like do what is our calling and like what we feel is like what we're supposed to do on this earth and that it Mm -hmm. happens to have been something together that would like we believe in like the greater kind of mystical like thing of that and Mm -hmm. and so we don't really question that um like we're very committed to that and Mm -hmm. so even if there's hard things that we have to then work through within our relationship as mother daughter and our working relationship like we know that that's just what we are that's part yeah we would we would be failing ourselves and there and failing our purpose you know Mm -hmm. so it's made us have to uh, not do that. Yeah. So that's an amazing thing. So this is your your life, your life mission. You guys see this, as telling yes. people stories, and, yes, and connecting with people. Well, we see we see our life mission as um, making making an impact. Um, we we see our life mission as uh, making as large an impact for self acceptance as as we possibly can like and and as is supposed to be and we don't really know what that's supposed to be is exactly but we can only serve that in the best way that we possibly can you know like we don't we don't we don't know what that is but right we know that we have to we have to do our best right and then and then you know the rest the rest will follow so and we have big you know there's big much more than what meets the eye as far as like what is in store for what we're trying to build towards. Yeah. And it's a quite a challenging journey building yes. towards it, like unexplainably challenging, but um oh my god. It's inexplicable it's inexplicably challenging and the whole thing and it's been uh it's definitely pushed us to our absolute maximum, almost breaking points. There's, there's no question. And, um, and part of that is, uh, that, that we didn't realize it when we started, but this has touched so many people. And when you see that and you know what it could do for so many more and, and the world, um, it, it, it's a big, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, you want to do it. Yeah. Like you, you're like, whoa, like this is an amazing opportunity. Um, you're not like, these are kind of, these are opportunities that just don't come. Mm. I don't think like that easily. So, um, so that you don't, you, you want to grab that opportunity because it is extremely fulfilling. And, um, and so we, we, we and, and one of the big, one of the difficulties is that the, there's so much potential um, and we're all at the same time, we're doing something so subversive. Mm-hmm. So putting those two things together, um, is hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we have, we're, we're always being, but, but by the people that love us the most and they're closest to us, um, are always like saying you, you're spread too thin. You're trying to do too much. Mm. Um, and that's true, but, um, in a way we're like, we don't like, it's hard to, it's, it, it's like hard not to <laughs> like, cause, yeah. because you have to do so, you know, 
in order, like we have a documentary that we haven't put out yet um, for various reasons. And it's, you know, kind of almost there, but not all the way there. And you need money. And yeah. in order to get money, you have to keep the, all the rest of it going, the mm-hmm. rest of the engines going. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's, you have to, there's a lot, it's not simple. Yeah. It's just not yeah. simple. It must be kind of frustrating at times because if you are so motivated and because you're doing work that is so incredibly fulfilling and I can't even imagine how how fulfilling it must feel you know when you have people from all around the world messaging you telling them that you've you know at times I was reading some of the comments like saved their lives and tr- totally changed yes. their lives and you know brought people from like the brinks of despair into like deciding they want to keep going for another day mm-hmm. so to have that awareness of the impact that you are creating but this awareness of what you also could do even if you don't even know what that looks like but how many more people you could touch and then also being restricted by you know if you're not you advertising x y and z while you're doing your videos how are you going to make the money so you guys have a patreon right and is that do you (laughs) have the job with that no we do have a patreon we're about to go back to it and do a better job yeah, yeah. I was like fostering it. And yeah. Like, yes, yeah, so we have a Patreon, though. That is the short answer. Yeah, basically. Yeah, that's one of the things where we do too many things. We do too many things. And like, that's one of the things. Like, it's, yeah. like, it's like we, you know, it, you know, it, how many, but, you, you know, like what it's like now. I mean, how many play Instagram. We haven't even started the TikTok thing, you yeah. know, whatever. <laughs> Patreon, like YouTube is the main thing for us. You know, it's like it's 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 a beast. Yeah, you know, and um, we're but yeah, small. But you know? people yeah. can people can support us on Patreon, and we will soon be starting to give more like extended cuts of videos and like early access to video. Like w- once we start releasing again in February, this new series, we're gonna start like making that more of an exciting place to be again. Okay, um, cool. But how I- we've made the money is, I mean, what we we have wonderful, amazing, amazing. Um, sponsors that have sponsored our videos um, it's it's you know they're rare they're they're rare brands and um, that you know that that take the step to support this it's mm-hmm. it's a rare brand and we're very grateful to them that's really been the main thing mm-hmm. um, and then we also have um, donors. donors we have mm-hmm. some donors but we you know that again cultivating that is a whole I mean people have teams for that yeah and we do all of it right oh so it's literally you two who do all of that (laughs) we know we we, we, of late we have a cup we have a small a couple other people helping us uh, and we have we've had iterations over the years of it being anywhere from just two of us to like up to four or five of us and it's but it's Mm -hmm. never much Um, yeah we're back to four or five okay so make 100 percent. give me all the links and everything so if anybody does want to support and you know support your amazing journey and see the work that you you two are doing um yeah please send that over because i think a lot of people do want to see that because your videos are amazing Um, thank you and as we kind of wrap this up the obviously main question i have to ask you two is what does your style say about you (laughs) <laughs> I've been so excited to ask that the whole time <laughs> I know we largely spoke about it already but um, yeah, yeah it would okay. be lovely to hear um, I think my style says that I'm like warm and friendly and loving person I feel really drawn to like bright colors and like warm like warm colors um and and I think it kind of also showed yeah it shows that I'm not like uh there's just something to me that like exudes a sort of warmth and and positivity in 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 wearing those colors um that I think expresses something about who I am and I think it also says that I'm proud of my body and that I embrace my body and that um I wear clothing that like celebrates celebrates my body um I think my style also says that I'm like a little bit of a goof and a nerd I you can often see me in in my like I'm wearing like big glasses all the time and have a, my hair and I'm a, can be a bit of a disheveled mess because I'm always caring more about what I'm doing every day in my work than like how I look and so sometimes I think that's a staple of my style can be like that I'm a bit of a goofball mess um and and care more about like what I'm focused on every day than looking perfect. Um, 
Would you say that's accurate? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> what about you? Me, I would say that um, kind of the, I'm the opposite of that. Um, every single solitary thing, my husband always jokes that I own and that I have down to like if I'm wearing 10 earrings in one ear, I cannot, if I lost one of them, I wouldn't be able to function. <laughs> so like every single, like it's very, style is very ceremonial um, and ritualistic for me. Um, it it represents uh, the power that we have, you know, inside of us to, uh, you know, really, um, you know, to be regal and, and, um, um, and, and just powerful, powerful and to not, uh, and to, and to be indis- indistinguishable from another. So like, you know, just the power so distinguishable. to be indistinguishable from another. So like you could not mistake, you could not be mistaken for another. Yeah, right. Um, and, 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 and I just, find, I, I'm obsessed with the beauty of that. I'm obsessed with, um, ceremonial you know, with, with fashion from a place of like dreaming and, and fantasy and, uh, creating a whole mood, no matter whether you're leaving your house or not, but like you just, it just creates you to just feel so good and powerful and, and that you, and, and unique and that you can't be erased. You can't be erased. Like nothing can erase you. Mm-hmm. That's in, you can't. Your soul and your being can't be erased. Mm-hmm. Do you think there's anything that you would recommend to people who want to, in a way, like let go of the shackles of n- maybe not the fashion that they have right now, but who they feel like potentially they've become in the clothes that they have because they. And if they kind of realize or they just want a a way to express themselves or do something that they can, that they can express themselves through their style. Does that make sense? Is there any kind of like recommendation of like an exercise, whether that's Mm -hmm. going through your cupboard and like thinking about each item or something? Maybe like going through your closet and like making a pile of like stuff that you got because you thought it like like what like I mean it's kind of like Marie Kondo or something but like what really like sparks joy for you when you look at it and what is just something that you kind of thought that like you were getting because it was going to make you look cool or like be like some kind of outside ideal that you thought you wanted to look like and like trying to get like zen about what is what and like get rid of that stuff that doesn't make you feel like excited and like joyful looking at or getting rid of the stuff that like is too small on you or like that makes you feel like constrained or or like you're trying to shrink yourself in any way. Um, yeah, anything that's like pretend. Like I would say pretentious or pretend. You know, like did I get this because it's like my pretend self because I'm fitting into the pretentious fashion industry norm, uh, which is or any norm that or like any norm. Feel like if if you're a guy and you feel like you have to look like straight, like like some kind of ideal of what straight guys are supposed to look like, but you really like that like shirt with flowers on. I mean, yeah. just like. Yeah. And take little steps because, you know, that, that can be, I, I, it's hard for me to understand because this is so easy for me, but like, like I would n- probably get fired in two seconds from any like corporate job. Cause I would not be able to, I, I would not be able to abide by anything that anyone told me. Like, yeah. no, no way. Like, no way. Like they would, could never tell me what kind of socks to wear. Nothing like hair, <laughs> hair, or nothing. So, um, yeah, but I do understand that a lot of people don't have that privilege, and I don't take that lightly. That's mm-hmm. I, I really don't mean that in like a, a obnoxious way. I a lot of people can't do that, and um, so I would say, um, you know, to just what are the little things that where, that where you can start to see yourself shining through, and like see how people respond to that because I think they will, mm-hmm. and then you take that step, and then you take it a little further, and then maybe ultimately. Um, you don't have to abide by the rules as much as you thought you had to because people will respond to you in a different way and go, eh, we'll let you slide because, mm-hmm. like, you're making me smile, you know? Mm-hmm. So do you think that's one of the biggest compliments? It's kind of a revolution. You, you know when people... Revolution. 
uh, have people ever said to you, you know when they pick up or you're wearing an item of clothing and they go oh it's so you I guess mm-hmm. that's kind of like one of the best compliments you could get in a way if you're really being your authentic self and then you're wearing something that really like shows that you are being mm-hmm. yourself and accepting yourself and celebrating yourself that that's a great thing for people to say rather than like wow you look so great mm-hmm. even though that's also great <laughs> Right, yeah. like you look so you. Or like how yeah. you put it together too. Like mm-hmm. sometimes it can be like the actual thing itself or whatever is, you know, like other, many other people might have it or it might be a simple thing, but it's like how you feel in it and how you are doing it. Like what's the overall way that you're wearing it, you know, like. But yeah, we should start like a movement where like that becomes the ultimate compliment. Like, yeah. that's, you look so you today. And mm-hmm. yeah. like, you look so good or bad or, you know, like, mm-hmm. you look so you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a really, really mm-hmm. a really cool, like freeing um, thing that you guys are talking about because I know it sounds it sounds simple. Sometimes I find it so funny right. doing podcasts because when people talk about the, you know, some things and it sounds so simple, like how look at something and think, am I is that authentically me? And I think so many people now were in speech, they think, oh, am I being authentically myself? And they feel like weird if they've said something and it doesn't really feel like them. But it's just a really um, beautiful and just different angle to look at it in terms of fashion and what you're wearing and it doesn't fashion ultimately doesn't have to be in your style doesn't have to be oh are you wearing the latest fashion are you doing this but like does this make you feel mm-hmm. more whole and I think that's mm-hmm. a really beautiful thing mm-hmm. yeah the latest has nothing to do with anything like it's it doesn't mean that you don't love it or love a piece of it or it doesn't open your mind to it's something new and exciting in terms of but to have to only be that you know, or you have to be, a it's all about that. intention. Mm-hmm. I mean, what's underneath in a way started when we used to say that you could wear a paper bag and have style. It's all about intention. Yeah. A person who was intending to wear a paper bag <laughs> and felt like that is them today. Yeah. is going to look good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. And it's true when you see those people who are like confident and themselves and they just ooze this energy that you just want to be around when someone has that. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's not the thing. Yeah. It's the person inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so can we, people who are listening, uh, do we ever have, because I've always wanted to see you two doing these videos and I'm wondering like, would you ever do the What's Underneath project? We did. Oh, did you? Well, at the beginning, like, it's time for a new one, though. 2014. Yeah. 2014, yeah, we okay. Yeah. We were thinking about whether we should Yeah, we were thinking about it the other day. I'm okay. kind of ready to do another one. Mm-hmm. 2021, the videos are coming. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Maybe. awesome. I'm going to go check out those two videos now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we, yeah, I think we're due for a new one. Yeah. It's like, because baby, there's it's a like big... baby Elisa and Lily. Yeah. Aww. We're... Yeah. 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 I definitely, I have been thinking, it's funny that you should ask it because I have been really thinking that I'm, I really am ready for, for a new one. And I, and I think it would be a different person, a a largely different person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, both of you, thank you so much for coming onto the podcast. Thank you for Um, having us. This has been fun for us. It's been super fun. And if there's anything else that obviously you've got your YouTube, Instagram, podcast, Patreon that's about to get sparked up and fired up with all this new content. Is there anything else? And you have um, the, did you call it a documentary or your film? How did you refer to it? Yeah, we have a documentary out? film yeah. in the works that, yeah. So the stay, stay on the alert for, mm-hmm. on the lookout for that. Um, and that, we also have a book. Um, ooh. Yeah. Yeah, we have a yeah. book that came out in you 20, would love the book. 2017. It's called True Style is What's Underneath. Uh-huh. Um, and it's like a, you know, it's 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 stories and photos from all the videos. So In closets it's and what's underneath. Table book. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Okay, I'm also going to check that out now as well. <laughs> <laughs> and is there anything else that you guys want to mention? or? No, yeah, just also for people to stay tuned for this new What's Underneath series of Black Voices airing in February. It's yes. going to be really next level. And I would say, I guess what I would say, we've always been really too shy to say this, but now now 2021, I'm going to say it. If you if people do like, you know, that are hearing this for the first time and, and, and go and 
like the videos and and everything um please share them yeah please please shout it out because it's it's um you know means a lot because the more of that kind of support we can have the more we can do our work mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. amazing okay so, perfect yeah. i'm gonna stop recording this here <laughs>